Ever wonder what the biggest threats to our health throughout history have been? From silent spreaders to rapid killers, we're ranking them from the historically harmful to the absolutely devastating. The swine flu, also known as the H1N1 virus, burst onto the global scene in 2009, causing widespread panic and grabbing headlines. It's a type of influenza that, as the name not so subtly suggests, originated in pigs. It decided to jump species and start infecting humans, showing that even viruses like to explore new species. They probably thought, hey, I'm done with pigs, let's kill some humans now. First detected in Mexico and the United States, swine flu quickly became a global sensation for all the wrong reasons. The World Health Organization declared it a pandemic in June of 2009. By the time the pandemic was over, it had made a tour of more than 200 countries. Swine flu symptoms were similar to that of regular flu, but came with a sense of unpredictability. People experienced fever, cough, sore throat, body aches, and in some cases, severe respiratory issues. What made swine flu stand out was its love for the young and healthy. <laughs> Unlike typical seasonal flu, which tends to hit older adults harder, swine flu is more likely to affect children, teenagers, and young adults. It's as if the virus is trying to appeal to a younger demographic. In terms of numbers, the Centers for Disease Control and Protection estimated that between April 2009 and April 2010, there were between 151,700 and 575,400 swine flu-related deaths worldwide. Which is a bit of a big range. Number two. Viral hemorrhagic fevers. Viral hemorrhagic fevers, which include Ebola and dengue viruses, are the party poopers of the virus world. They're contagious, relentless, and unfortunately often have a lethal end. Think of them as the uninvited relatives at a family reunion who just can't stop causing trouble. Let's rewind to Mexico between 1545 and 1548. VHFs decided to throw a surprise party there. This unwelcome bash wiped out an estimated 5 million to 15 million of the native population, making it the country's worst epidemic. The natives called this menacing illness Kokolitzli, or the Great Pestilence. And great it was, but in a way that nobody wanted. Kokolitzli was a, like a terrible artist, painting the body in shades of horror. It turned urine into alarming colors of green and black. The eyes and skin weren't spared either, turning a sallow yellow, while tongues went dry and black. The infected person would then start having delirium and seizures. Add to this mix of some hard, painful lumps behind the ears, a bit of chest and abdominal pain, and some violent tremors and dysentery for good measure. Number 3. Cholera A disease that is still here with us, claiming 143,000 deaths a year worldwide, this little bad boy done caused seven pandemics in the last 200 years. This is one disease that doesn't know when to stop. The first pandemic originated in India in 1817, and it was followed by two more. Deaths in India between 1817 and 1860 and the first three pandemics of the 19th century are estimated to have exceeded 15 million people. Another 23 million died between 1865 and 1917 during the next three pandemics. Remember 2020 when the world stood still and we were all in lockdown? Yeah, that happened in India during these times. Cholera is that workaholic in your office that just doesn't know when to take a day off. So what's the secret behind cholera's unwelcome success? All thanks to the Vibrio cholerae bacteria which starts its party as an intestinal infection. This pesky bacteria loves to travel through contaminated food and water, especially when it's had to swim in sewage. Wherever sanitation systems are on a break or disrupted, cholera jumps in, ready to turn things upside down. Cholera causes severe dehydration and diarrhea, and if left untreated, cholera can wrap up its deadly performance in just a few hours. Number four, AIDS. The AIDS epidemic is like that long, challenging book you find in the Library of Life. It's been around for decades, and it's impacted millions. <gasps> Human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, the mastermind behind this epidemic, is notorious for causing a spectrum of conditions, eventually leading to acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS. Since its emergence in 1981, AIDS, along with HIV-related illnesses, have claimed about 40 million lives. To put that into perspective, that is like losing the entire population of Canada. In 2017 alone, 940,000 people bid their final farewells due to this virus. As of 2014, around 36.9 million people were living with HIV worldwide. Those are some staggering numbers. So, how does HIV do its damage? Well, it targets a specific type of white blood cell crucial to your immune system. Imagine if a tiny invader started disassembling your body's defense wall, brick by brick. Over time, it weakens your immune system, allowing various symptoms and illnesses to set up camp in your body. Transmission of HIV can happen in several ways. Through unprotected sex, sharing needles, which is never a good idea, by the way, infected blood transfusions, and from mother to baby during pregnancy, childbirth, or breastfeeding. Luckily, there is medication that can stop this, and people can live long and happy lives, even if they're infected. <laughs> Number five, the Black Death. The infamous Black Death might sound like a heavy metal band name, but it's actually the nickname of a real showstopper in the world of plagues. 
The not-so-friendly visitor has a history of popping up and causing chaos, claiming tens of millions of lives globally. The plague has made its dramatic entrance several times, each with a different stage name. Athens, Antoninus, Cyprus, and Justinianus, to name a few. But the 14th century tour, known as the Black Death, really stole the show. It was so devastating that about a third of Europe's population got just wiped off the map. And why the name Black Death? Well, this plague left black spots in the skin, which is about as pleasant as it sounds. The symptoms of the Black Death were as dramatic as its impact. It started with fevers, chills, and body aches that could make the toughest night whimper. Then came the vomiting and the infamous black spots, which were more like bruises or swollen lymph nodes. The Black Death, which did a grand tour of Europe between 1347 and 1351, is estimated to have said a permanent goodbye to 75 million to 100 million people. It kicked off in Southwest Asia before deciding Europe was its next stop in the late 1340s. Fast forward to the 17th century and the plague decided to visit Spain. Between 1647 and 1652, the Great Plague of Seville had the locals scared, <coughs> taking about a quarter of the city's population. That's around 76,000 people. So what's behind all this mayhem? A little something called Yersinia pestis, a bacterial disease that gets around with the help of flea-ridden rats. It is still around today, surprisingly, sending about 100 to 200 people each year to go on an unplanned trip to the afterlife. Number 6. Smallpox Smallpox sounds like it belongs to some cutesy, harmless bug, but don't let that fool you. This disease was anything but small in its impact. Smallpox is estimated to have killed up to 300 million people in the 20th century, and around 500 million people in the last 100 years of its existence. <gasps> Those are big scary numbers. It showed up in all ages and sexes bringing along large, fluid-filled pustules that loved to be on people's faces and bodies. And when the pustules left, they did not go quietly. They often left ugly scars on the body. This febrile and infectious disease was not picky. It was the most common cause of death in history, with a grim success rate of taking about 30% of its hosts. There were two types of smallpox, variola major and variola minor. It's like they were trying to compete to see which one could cause more mayhem. Variola major was the bad cop, more severe, more dangerous where variola minor was like its less troublesome sibling. Smallpox didn't need an invitation to spread. They could travel from person to person or hitch a ride on contaminated objects. Children, in particular, seemed to be its favorite targets, which is just plain annoying. The last naturally occurring case of smallpox was diagnosed in October of 1977. It's like the world finally said, party's over, smallpox. And then in 1980, the World Health Organization made the biggest global announcement by declaring the eradication of smallpox. Let's all take a second to be just glad that that's over. Number 7. Typhus Typhus outbreaks throughout history have been like that one annoying song that keeps getting stuck in your head. These outbreaks have popped up here and there, each time bringing misery. Hmm. One of the most memorable, for all the wrong reasons, of the typhus episodes kicked off in 1848. This particular outbreak was a real downer, especially for Irish immigrants who had hopped over to Canada, hoping to escape the Great Irish Famine. Instead of a warm welcome, or I guess a cold welcome in that case, they met typhus who clearly hasn't read the memo on hospitality. Over 20,000 people lost their lives to this disease, which came back with a bundle of nasty symptoms. A raging fever, red spots over the arms, back and chest, delirium, and gangrenous sores that smelled like rotting flesh. Fast forward to World War I, and guess who decided to show up? Typhus ran rampant amongst the armies of the Eastern Front, like the worst kind of battlefield souvenir. In Yugoslavia alone, an estimated 150,000 soldiers ended up saying their final goodbyes just thanks to Typhus. During the Russian Civil War, typhus really went all in. Here, three million people were lost to this disease. In 1922, at the peak of the epidemic in Soviet territory, there were 25 million to 30 million cases reported. Luckily, there is some good news. With the introduction of antibiotics, namely doxycycline, typhus's reign is finally over. And we humans have conquered another disease. Take that, typhus. Spanish flu. The Spanish flu, also known as the 1918 influenza pandemic, was one of the worst viruses in history caused by a particularly nasty subtype of the H1N1 virus, it swept across the world between 1918 and 1920. This virus was so bad that it's considered the worst pandemic in modern history. It took out 50 million to 100 million people in just 18 months. Now, this virus didn't just infect a few, it infected everyone. About 500 million people, which was roughly a third of the world's population at the time, got an unwanted visit from this virus. And World War I was like an open invitation for the Spanish flu to spread even faster. It was so prevalent during the last two months of the war that some people think it even played a role in ending the four-year war. It probably took more lives than bullets did, honestly. Unlike other flu viruses that eventually and usually target the elderly and children, 
This one had a thing for young adults and people with perfectly fine immune systems. Felt like it was trying to challenge the norm at the worst point possible. The symptoms were like a collection of the worst flu hits. Chills, fatigue, nausea, sneezing, wheezing, and coughing. <coughs> After treating its victims to nasty fevers and diarrhea, the Spanish flu went on for a grand finale, filling the lungs with fluid and turning people's skin blue. Not exactly the look anyone was going for. Luckily, the virus just disappeared. Let's hope that the Spaniard doesn't decide to come back and haunt us all. Which of these deadly diseases did you think would be the most deadly if it appears in society today? Let us know in the comment section down below, and if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe for more, and share it with friends who love a good adrenaline rush. Until next time, goodbye.